the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, and the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. And with your spirit. Brethren, let us acknowledge our sins, and so prepare ourselves to celebrate the sacred mysteries. I confess to Almighty God, and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have greatly sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do, through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask Blessed Mary, ever-Virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayer, almighty and ever-living God. May no earthly undertaking hinder those who have set us in haste to meet your Son, but may our learning of heavenly wisdom gain us admittance to his company, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever. A reading from the book of the prophet Baruch. Jerusalem, take off your robe of mourning and misery. Put on the splendor of glory from God forever. Wrapped in the cloak of justice from God, bear on your head the mitre that displays the glory of the eternal name. For God will show all the earth your splendor. You will be named by God forever, the peace of justice, the glory of God's worship. Up, Jerusalem. Stand upon the heights, look to the east and see your children gathered from the east and the west at the word of the Holy One, rejoicing that they are remembered by God. Led away on foot by their enemies, they left you, but God will bring them back to you, borne aloft in glory as on royal thrones. For God has commanded that every lofty mountain be made low and that the age old depths and gorges be filled to level ground that Israel may advance secure in the glory of God. The forest and every fragrant kind of tree have overshadowed Israel at God's command. For God is leading Israel in joy by the light of his glory with his mercy and justice for company. The word of the Lord.
A reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Philippians. Brothers and sisters, I pray always with joy in my every prayer for all of you because of your partnership for the gospel from the first day until now. I am confident of this, that the one who began a good work in you will continue to complete it until the day of Christ Jesus. God is my witness, how I long for you with the affection of Jesus Christ. And this is my prayer, that your love may increase ever more and more in knowledge and every kind of perception to discern what is of value, so that you may be pure and blameless for the day of Christ, filled with the fruit of righteousness that comes through Jesus Christ for the glory and praise of God. The word of the Lord. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to St. Luke. Glory to you, Lord. 
In the fifteenth year of the reign of Tiberius Caesar, when Pontius Pilate was governor of Judea, and Herod was tetrarch of Galilee, and his brother Philip tetrarch of the region of Eritrea and Traconteus, and Lysanias was the tetrarch of Abilene, during the high priesthood of Annas and Caiaphas, the word of God came to John, the son of Zechariah, in the desert. John went throughout the whole region of the Jordan, proclaiming a baptism of repentance for the forgiveness of sins. As it is written in the book of the words of the prophet Isaiah, a voice of one crying out in the desert, prepare the way of the Lord, make straight his paths. Every valley shall be filled and every mountain and hill shall be made low. The winding road shall be made straight and the rough ways made smooth and all flesh shall see, shall see the salvation of God. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Occasionally I've been asked, what is your favorite Christmas movie, and to which I have to respond, there are two different kinds. There are Christmas movies which take place during Christmas and are about Christmas. There are, are many kinds of the, uh, many of those that I, I really like. And then there are what I call Xmas movies. What you may ask is an Xmas movie. It's a movie that takes place during Christmas, but has absolutely nothing whatsoever to do with Christmas. Die Hard is an Xmas movie. And I am one of the opinion that Christmas really doesn't happen until Hans Gruber drops from the top of Nakatomi Tower. But like I said, I have many favorite Christmas movies. I, I really like a Christmas story. I'm one of the ones who like that they play it over and over and over again on a couple of days a year. Uh, the George C. Scott version of A Christmas Carol, which I think is the best version. I have gotten into actual fights with people who think the Muppet version is superior, but they're wrong. And then there, of course, is Christmas Vacation. What a lovely movie where poor Clark Griswold keeps in his vain quest to have the perfect family Christmas. And I think all of us can relate to that. We all want the perfect family Christmas, and has anyone actually ever had one? I don't think so, because there's always a little bit of family fighting, there's always stress over it, there's always something that goes wrong. As I thought about all of these, both Xmas and Christmas movies, one thing occurred to me, which is that they never take place during calm, calm times. There's also always something going on, whether it's, it's George Bailey's uncle losing the money from the, from the savings and loan, or it's Clark wanting his perfect family Christmas, or if it's Ralphie wanting a Red Ryder BB gun with a compass in the stock. There's always something going on. And I also like historical stories of things that happened at Christmas. And there's the best ones of them also took place during trying times. Could be the Continental Army wintering at Valley Forge and winning the great battle by sneaking over the river while the Germans were partying. Or it could be the Christmas truce that took place during the, during the, uh, in the trenches during World War I. Or it could even be the Battle of the Bulge and things that are around that. Always some great trying thing going on. And I think the reason why these make for great Christmas stories is that you really don't see the light as sharply 
except when it is very dark, when there is something to contrast with it. And the first Christmas wasn't in the best of times either. You know, Christmas isn't, isn't a mythological story. We know it's, a, it's an historical event. St. Luke makes it quite clear that the, the coming of Christ and even the, the service of John the Baptist, which we heard about in our first reading, took place during the reign of Tiberius Caesar. And there, there are all sorts of other people with wonderful names of wonderful places that shows this happened at a particular time. Well, when our Lord took upon himself our frail human nature, the people of God were under Roman rule. Mary and Joseph had to journey from up north in the Holy Land down to Bethlehem in order to be taxed. And even when the, the prophecy concerning the coming of our Lord was issued by Isaiah, there were a lot of, of hard things going on for God's people. And yet, there are these shining messages of hope. Christmas is not about us just looking back 2,000 years ago and seeing something wonderful that happened back then. As Advent, this first part of Advent reminds us is that it also causes us to look forward to the completion of the great work which was begun at Christmas. Our Lord redeeming the whole world, coming to judge the heavens and the earth and the world by fire. Our Lord coming in glory to set all things right. And this is part of the message of the gospel. Things don't have to be perfect in order for God to come into our lives. If that were true, God would never have come into to our lives because things have never been perfect since the sin of Adam and Eve. John the Baptist issued his cry to repentance, not in Eden, but in the wilderness. And he calls us to welcome God and to be open to him, to make straight the pathway of God. How do we do this? Very simple. Turn from sin and turn to what our opening prayer calls heavenly wisdom. And by doing so, we enter into his company. Because we don't just have to wait for God to come in glory at the end of time. He comes to us here and now, most especially through the sacraments. But he also comes to us in other ways too. Even when our family is being a little grumpy at Christmas, even during a time of COVID, even during a time when all sorts of rather odd things are going on. God wants to come to us. A good way that we can turn from our sins and turn to him is by going to confession. Now, I don't do penance services, you know, where you, you round up seven or eight priests and have them all here one night. Instead, what I do, and you've probably seen this in the, in the Christmas card that you should have received by now, if not, you'll see it listed in the, uh, in, the mis mis yeah, in the bulletin. There will be all sorts of times during the week before Christmas when I will be in the confessional. That way you don't have to just worry about showing up on one night for two hours when there's seven priests here. You can, they, there can be a whole bunch of different times. So please don't leave me alone in the confessional. my sons and daughters in Christ. Have hope and don't let imperfection, either yours or someone else's, tarnish that hope, but instead be focused upon the Lord Jesus who came to us as a baby in Bethlehem of Judea 2,000 years ago, who comes to us now in the sacraments and who will come in glory at the end of time. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
I believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all things visible and invisible. I believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, born of the Father before all ages, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, consubstantial with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us men and for our salvation he came down from heaven, and by the Holy Spirit was incarnate of the Virgin Mary and became man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried, and rose again on the third day in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is adored and glorified, who hath spoken through the prophets. I believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. I confess one baptism for the forgiveness of sins, and I look forward to the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Let us now raise our voices in prayer for the needs of the church and the world. For our Holy Father, Pope Francis, and our Bishop Oscar, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For all those who are sick, those who care for the sick, and all those affected by the pandemic, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That our civil leaders will govern in accord with the gospel, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our, hear our prayer. That fallen away and apostate Catholics will return to Christ's church, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That we will be blessed with an increase in vocations to the religious life, diaconate, and priesthood, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the protection of our country and the safety of our military forces and first responders, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For the repose of the souls of the faithful departed, especially David Hughes and Cosmo Young, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. That the church may bring about effective repentance from the sin of abortion and the gift healing to those wounded by it, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For our own intention that we add in silence, we pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. Almighty and ever-living Father, look with kindness upon these prayers which we offer in the name of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, God forever and ever.
Pray, brethren, that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. May the Lord accept this sacrifice at your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and good of all his holy church. Be pleased, O Lord, with our humble prayers and offerings, and since we have no merits to plead our cause, come, we pray, to our rescue with your protection of your mercy. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. This Mass is being offered for the repose of the soul of Gregory Bay. The Lord be with you. And with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just our duty and our salvation always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, almighty and eternal God, through Christ our Lord. For he assumed at his first coming the lowliness of human flesh, and so fulfilled the design you formed long ago, and opened for us the way to eternal salvation, that when he comes again in glory and majesty, and all is at last made manifest, we who watch for that day may inherit the great promise in which now we dare to hope. And so with angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. You therefore, most merciful Father, we make humble prayer and petition through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, that you accept and bless these gifts, these offerings, these holy and unblemished sacrifices, which we offer you firstly for your holy Catholic Church. Be pleased to grant her peace, to guard, unite, and govern her throughout the whole world, together with your servant Francis, our Pope, and Oscar, our Bishop, and all those who, holding to the truth, hand on the Catholic and apostolic faith. Remember, Lord, your servants. And all gathered here whose faith and devotion are known to you, for them we offer you this sacrifice of praise, or they offered for themselves and all who are dear to them, for the redemption of their souls in hope of health and well-being, and paying their homage to you, the eternal God, living and true. In communion with those whose memory we venerate, especially the glorious ever-Virgin Mary, Mother of our God and Lord Jesus Christ, and blessed Joseph, her spouse, your blessed apostles and martyrs, Peter and Paul, Andrew, James, John, Thomas, James, Philip, Bartholomew, Matthew, Simon, and Jude, Linus, Cletus, Clement, Sixtus, Cornelius, Cyprian, Lawrence, Chrysogonus, John and Paul, Cosmos and Damien, and all your saints. We ask that through their merits and prayers and all things we may be defended by your protecting help. Through Christ our Lord, amen. Therefore, Lord, we pray, Graciously accept this oblation of our service, that of your whole family. Order our days in your peace and command that we be delivered from eternal damnation and counted among the flock of those you have chosen. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Be pleased, O God, we pray, to bless, acknowledge, and approve this offering in every respect. Make it spiritual and acceptable so that it may become for us the body and blood of your most beloved Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. On the day before he was to suffer, 
he took bread in his holy and venerable hands. With eyes raised to heaven, he, O God, his almighty Father, giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took this precious chalice in his holy and venerable hands. And once more, giving you thanks, he said the blessing and gave the chalice to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. Mysterium Fidei. Therefore, O Lord, as we celebrate the memorial of the Blessed Passion, the resurrection from the dead, and the glorious ascension into heaven of Christ, your Son, our Lord. We, your servants and your holy people, offer to your glorious majesty from the gifts you have given us, this pure victim, this holy victim, this spotless victim, the holy bread of eternal life and the chalice of everlasting salvation. Be pleased to look upon these offerings with a serene and kindly countenance, and to accept them as once you were pleased to accept the gifts of your servant Abel the Just, the sacrifice of Abraham, our father in faith, and the offering of your high priest, Melchizedek, a holy sacrifice, a spotless victim. In humble prayer, we ask you, Almighty God, command that these gifts be borne by the hands of your holy angel at your altar on high in the sight of your divine majesty, so that all of us who, through this participation at the altar, receive the most holy body and blood of your Son may be filled with every grace and heavenly blessing through Christ our Lord. Amen. Remember also, Lord, your servants who have gone before us with the sign of faith and rest in the sleep of peace. Grant them, O Lord, we pray, and all who sleep in Christ, a place of refreshment, light, and peace. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. To us also, your servants who, though sinners, open your abundant mercies, graciously grant some share and fellowship with your holy apostles and martyrs, with John the Baptist, Stephen, Matthias, and Barnabas, Ignatius, Alexander, Marcellinus, Peter, Felicity, Perpetua, Agatha, Lucy, Agnes, Cecilia, Anastasia, and all your saints. Admit us, we beseech you, into their company, not weighing our merits, but granting us your pardon through Christ our Lord, through whom you continue to make all these good things, O Lord. You sanctify them, fill them with life, bless them, and bestow them upon us. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. At the Savior's command and form by divine teaching, we dare to say, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. 
Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days, that by the help of your mercy we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you always. At this time, while we're unable to approach our Lord's altar in our church, in faith, we make a spiritual act of communion as we pray, My Jesus, I believe that you are present in the most holy sacrament. I love you above all things, and I desire to receive you into my soul. Since I cannot at this moment receive you sacramentally, come at least spiritually into my heart. I embrace you as if you were already there and unite myself wholly to you. Never permit me to be separated from you. Amen. Let us pray. Replenished by the food of spiritual nourishment, we humbly beseech you, O Lord, that through our partaking in this mystery, you may teach us to judge wisely the things of earth and to hold firm to the things of heaven. Through Christ our Lord. As for some good news, we have the, the plans for the confessionals and the church have been approved. Uh, we'll, uh, you'll be able to see what they look like in a few weeks when we have a display, also knowing uh, so that you can donate to them because we have to pay for them too to have them built, but they, they look really good. Uh, secondly, uh, this Wednesday is the Solemnity of the Immaculate Conception, is the Patronal Feast Day of the United States. And it is a holy day of obligation. We have Masses at 7 a.m. The 8.30 a.m. Mass is only for Cosgrove students. We have to do that because of COVID. Uh, and we have Mass at 7 p.m. The day before is St. Ambrose Day. It is also 
the anniversary of the dedication of this church. And on both of those days, if they were separate, you could get a plenary indulgence. You might say, why are we having something special on the day? Because it's right before a holy day of obligation. What genius thought of that one up? I don't know. But in any case, you can still get a, plen a plenary indulgence by visiting the church, which is open during the day, uh, praying for the intentions of the Pope, and within two weeks, either way, going to confession and receiving Holy Communion. The Lord be with you. Bow down for the blessing. May the almighty and merciful God, by whose grace you have placed your faith in the first coming of his only begotten Son, and yearn for his coming again, sanctify you by the radiance of Christ's advent, and enrich you with his blessing. Amen. As you run the race of this present life, may he make you firm in faith, joyful in hope, and active in charity. Amen. So that, rejoicing now with devotion at the Redeemer's coming in the flesh, you may be endowed with the rich reward of eternal life when he comes again in majesty. Amen. And may the blessing of Almighty God, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit come down on you and remain with you forever. Amen. Go forth, the Mass is ended. Hail, Holy Queen, Mother of Mercy, our life, our sweetness, and our hope. To thee do we cry, poor banished children of Eve. To thee do we send up our sighs, mourning and weeping in this valley of tears. Turn then, most gracious advocate, thine eyes of mercy towards us. And after this our exile, show unto us the blessed fruit of thy womb, Jesus. O clement, O loving, O sweet Virgin Mary, pray for us, O Holy Mother of God, St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in this day of battle. Be our safeguard against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and the other evil spirits who prowl about the world seeking the ruin of souls. Amen. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. Most sacred heart of Jesus. For an end to the drought, hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. For a resolution of the Dobbs case, which respects all innocent human life. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus.